Haven't heard it, mate. So I got a load of people to send me loads of messages on Instagram, right? Well, not just Instagram, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, but I only really look on Instagram. So I'm gonna answer all of these questions as quick as possible, because there are quite a few. I think there's like 20 questions or something. You did send quite a lot of them. Most of them are jokes. Thanks very much. Uh, that really helps. The first question comes from my mate Dean, and he asks, what's your favorite sore throat album? Right, I got a little story about this. I used to play in a band called Witch Cult, and I've already spoken about this in a few videos before, but every time we got in the car to go to somewhere to play a gig, like if we were going from Paul, which is in South England, all the way up to, I don't know, Nottingham or something. I would always go with the singer, which was Dean. We'd have this challenge where we'd have the iPod on shuffle and there was one album, for some reason, it was the Sore Throat discography, but it was in one song, so you couldn't skip it. The rules were, if a song came on, you had to listen to it all the way through. So if that Sore Throat album came on, it was just, the whole discography, and I don't know if you know Sore Throat, but they're this band that would just like, you know that song by Napalm Death, You Suffer But Why? It's basically like 400 songs of that. Whenever it came on, it was like funny for the first half an hour, but then it just got, it just melts your mind. Every single time I listen to Sore Throat, it kind of reminds me of that painful time when we were in the car. What's my favorite Gabba artist? Also from Dean. Um, don't really have a favorite Gabba artist, but I do remember this one time I was on Spotify and I found a Christmas album of Gabba. I can't insert it here because it will get copywritten, copyrighted, copywritten, whatever. Next question comes from David Welch on Instagram and they ask, what's your favorite release, brackets, album or song by a band that you've been in? Good question. I did really like the 10 inch that I did with The Long Haul. That was a band that I played in ages ago. Influenced heavily by Poison The Well. I really, really love that band. I love doing vocals in it. That's probably one of my favorite releases. The one that I love the most is definitely the one from Witch Cult, which was our self-titled 12 inch, but it was one-sided, had a little etch on the back of it. That's probably my favorite just because it was like all of the mates getting together, playing whatever they want and just mishmashing all of their favorite music into one album. Next question comes from Punker Wallop, that's my mate Nick. He asked on Instagram, what do you think of Liquefied Skeleton? Another little story for you. Liquefied Skeleton is a band that we saw live. We were in a band called Morphine Season, I think that was the name of it. You know that Every Time I Die song, we named our band after that. We were in a little band and we got offered to go up to London from some sort of record company or something, I can't remember what it was, but they wanted us to come up to London so they could talk to us. Super young at the time, it was really, really crazy and like a really big thing for us because they paid for everything. So we turned up to this place, right? And this band called Liquefied Skeleton were playing and they were just a really, really good death metal band. But we were absolutely creasing like the whole way through the show. Like I couldn't hack it because the singer mate, he had like a bold head, beater on, guitar like super high and the mic was like real, real high but like bent down, proper like motorhead. Mate, I couldn't hack it, it was like, it was killing me, it was so funny. I remember they had this song called Ripped and Torn and like every single time they started a song, they would do that real like typical death metal thing of screaming the song title into the mic. Next question is from Epilogue Photography on Instagram. They asked a few questions, one sec. Almost ready to take depositions. Name your top three or top five on your concert yet to see live bucket list. Top three or five concerts that I wanna go and see. I would really like to go and see Danzig or Misfits. I've pretty much seen everyone that I really like live. Who do I really like that I'd like to see? Smashing Pumpkins. But they're probably crap live now, aren't they? The thing is, right, about this bucket list, am I allowed to say bands that have broken up that are definitely not getting back together? Because then I've got tons of bands. I'd definitely like to see Weezer live. I'd like to see Electric Wizard play Witch Cult Today the whole way through. Smashing Pumpkins back in the day in the 90s. I'd like to see Misfits live, but back in the day, Integrity from the Humanity is the Devil album. Basically all the bands that I really, really love, but I'd like to see them back in time. So the next question comes from Sudden Ambitions on Instagram and they asked, what are your thoughts on the new Ice Age? What are your thoughts on the latest Godflesh? Who's your favorite jazz musician? Do you have a favorite death metal band? What do I think on Ice Age? I haven't really heard that album, but I really do love Ice Age as a band. And I really like the way they progress through their albums, just going really weird and experimenting with their super raw punk sound that they came out with their self-titled, going through like this weird sort of like country theme on that latest album they brought out. But the new one, I haven't really listened to it. I'm sure it's amazing because Ice Age are always going super wacky. And I love March in Church as well. March in Church is super good. Saw them live in Berlin and it was incredible. What are my thoughts on the latest Godflesh? Also haven't heard it, probably should get on some of these new albums, shouldn't I? My favorite jazz musician. 
Haven't got a favorite jazz musician, to be honest. I think I mentioned this in a video before that jazz is one of those sections of music that I'm one of those genres that I haven't really like wormed my way into. I really do appreciate this really crazy, like intense jazz. And I have heard a lot of it. I mean, like I did ask in a video before for people to link it below. And some people link the most amazing stuff and I was really, really into it. It's just that I haven't got any albums. I haven't got anything that I'm like, I solidly listen to constantly, but jazz is pretty beautiful. Do I have a favorite death metal band? I do. Well, there's a few, right? The thing is with favorite death metal bands, right? 15, 16, that was when I was listening to death metal a lot. And I was listening to bands like Misanthropic Carnage, Dying Fetus, Beheaded, Cannibal Corpse, all of the like proper big boys in death metal. And I was really, really into it. And I was absolutely loving it. Next question comes from Amazon on Instagram. And they asked, what's my favorite instrumental album? My favorite instrumental album? So it's probably a soundtrack actually, isn't it? Like I got a lot of movie soundtracks recently on vinyl because they're all coming out and pressing them like super nice. It's probably between two. It's the Hans Zimmer Interstellar soundtrack or it's gotta be the Cloud Atlas soundtrack just for that one title sequence and the original version of the one that they recreated for the movie. Just like super awesome, sad, really slow classical piano. Really, really love that movie and I love that soundtrack. Next question is from Daniel, my mate Dan Dan Dan. He asks, what do you think of the new Turnstile album and what is your favorite album with the worst artwork? Turnstile are a sick band and I'm really, really into them and I loved all of their seven inches. I was super, super into it. I wasn't really into the 12 inch they brought out. What was it called? Something Feeling, I can't remember what it was called. The Step to Rhythm seven inch is probably one of my favorite hardcore releases I've heard in a long, long time. Super groovy, super catchy, really, really good to sing along to. Didn't like the new album too much. Just wasn't into it. I think the thing with Turnstile is when they do seven inches, they just can achieve the super quick and snappy, like really awesome groovy songs. And they can just smash them out like super quick and the album is over, you know, like a little EP or whatever. But when they do an album, it just, it just doesn't gel together in, in my opinion, because it's just, it's too much. It's too much of the same stuff. With a seven inch, it works perfect. What is my favorite album with the worst artwork? Mate. I got it, you know what I love? I really love Diamond Eyes by Deftones. That was one of those albums which really got me back into Deftones. Super, super heavy tones and really detuned on a massive, massive heavy sound on that guitar. I really love that album so much, but that artwork is like just a bird. Next question comes from Rich So Far on Instagram and they asked, what do I think of the new Death Heaven tracks? Also the new Birds in a Row. The new Death Heaven tracks, you know what? Like Death Heaven are one of those bands which you sort of, you catch it, you know what I mean? Like people are always posting it on Instagram or Facebook or whatever and it's always in my feed and I do tend to click on it every now and again to listen to it to get a little bit of a feel for it because I really did like New Bermuda. I, I, I liked some of the riffs in there. I liked the darkness. It really reminded me of Emperor. I'm just not into that really dragged out sort of shoegazy post rock thing that they're doing because the way they do it is super calm and super chill and then they go into these like heavy blast beat things and I just felt like they're churning the same thing out over and over again rather than like throwing some new stuff in there. I don't know. I just wasn't into the new Deaf Heaven stuff at all. The first thing they brought out, the demo with um, Daedalus on there, I think it was called Daedalus or something like that. Some of my favorite Deaf Heaven tracks. I, I constantly listen to them, still think they're absolutely incredible and I really, really love them. I think it's like the raw sound and the way they were recorded. It was just incredible. Really, really love that stuff. The new birds in a row, haven't heard it, mate. Right, okay, so the last question is coming from Tour de France Soundtracks on Instagram. What's my favorite album of the year so far? And this is a really, really good question because I wanted to do a separate video on this where I talk about my favorite albums or what I've really been listening to this year, but I've been super busy and trying to get everything together. I'm gonna do this as a separate video, but I'm gonna let you know my favorite album of this year by far this year is Weightlessness by Take Shape. The reason I love this so much and the reason I found it is because the singer from Take Shape is the singer from It Prevails. For anyone that doesn't know, It Prevails holds like a super big place in my heart and I listen to them nonstop. And when this album came out, it just blew my mind because it doesn't have any of the screaming that It Prevails has. It just has all of the singy parts and it's super melodic amazing lyrics and I just can't get enough of it. I can't tell you how much I love this album. It's absolutely incredible. I don't want to talk about it too much, but I can tell you that it's definitely by far my favorite album of this year. A big Lots of hours. Nice one, cool. Um, I'm gonna go edit this and then I'm gonna go to Ikea and eat some chips because um, they're really good there. And I will see you next time. Cheers. Right, go!